Sussex FM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me is Stephen Merchant and Carl Bilkins. Yeah. That's three for one. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Exciting. Exciting. Um, Oh, news, oh, news, news, news. Uh, breaking news is that there's only two more weeks of us before we have to go away on a little extended break again. So, um, can't give any more details yet. We don't know when we can come back because, uh, we don't know. What we're doing, we're going to, um, America. We're doing the Golden Globes and then we're gonna watch the office pilot being filmed. Yes. And then we've got bits, I'm, I'm doing a bit of a tour. So it'll be sort of the summer times, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm saying it like they they care. Oh, they don't give a damn. Do you know what I mean? I sometimes think that because, um, you think, oh, you don't want to let down the people, you want to be, keep it consistent, you want to give, you know, but really, I know I like doing this more than anyone listening. Definitely. Do you know what definitely, I mean? Definitely, definitely. I yeah. love coming in, I love squeezing Carl's head. Yeah. I love playing some records. You know, I like sort of sitting in the room with you. I know you love it. Oh. <laughs> hey, can't wait. I can't think of anything else I'd rather be doing on a Saturday. Yeah. So, uh, we got our Saturdays back though. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, my alarm went off today and I was a bit tired because we, we had a couple of drinks last night, didn't we? Last night, yeah. We had, a, we had, you know, party, we had party animals. Yeah. Um, but, um, oh, I've been looking for an office this week, mm. as you know, and it's so stressful. <sighs> Just walking around, just talking to t agents and but but uh, right okay. So my method is this, right? I walk around the area that I want to be in office uh, in because I, I don't want to hear anything else. I don't want to, you know what I mean? So I walk around. It, uh, uh, to be fair, it is about a square five hundred yards. Yeah, right. It's sort Your of house is in the centre. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I walk, yeah, and uh, so I walk around and look at placards. I go, that's a nice office, and I phone them up. There's loads of different people I'm dealing with, right? And I went, oh, we got one in so-and-so street, I, I think it was Fifth Street or something like that. I went, oh yeah, I went along to, so I'll see you there in twenty minutes. I got there, you were there, if you remember. Mm -hmm. I looked around and I said to Steve, it looks alright, there's no, 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 no pawn shops or anything like that, right? And Steve went, well, it is next to a brothel. And I looked and there on the next thing, like, you know, model, first floor, uh, Susie, oh three, oh, and I phoned him and I said, do you know what, um, don't bother coming here. He went, no, I said, no, no, I said, because it's next to a brothel. He went, yeah. I went, right, okay, just for future reference, I don't want an office literally next to a brothel, <laughs> right? When I go to work, I don't want to walk past prostitutes. Call me old fashioned. Yeah, right? as she's so, going into work, there's a prostitute. Yeah. Morning, morning. Morning, morning. Oh, she's got a cappuccino. Yeah, Starbucks, yeah. <laughs> uh, business good? Yeah, it's a bit slow at the moment. It picks up later this evening, does it really? Good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I, said, I, I said to him, I've got so. So my, my news resolution is being like a little fascist when it comes to business. And, and I said, uh, uh, also future reference, um, uh, no, no crack dens and no wild animals in the porch. <laughs> and, uh, I, I just can't believe it. There's always something wrong. We went to one, right? It got there, right? And, uh, a woman said, oh, I'm new here. She didn't, she didn't have, didn't know what keys she was using. And she went, it's the third floor. And she went, and at no point, we won't both get in the lift. I went, right, will you get a desk in the lift? <laughs> Right, she went, I've got a chair in the lift before. <laughs> Brilliant. So, yeah. just find me an office, Rathbone Place, sort of Percy Street, Charlotte Street, Dean Street. Yeah. Yeah. First or second I'm floor. I'm worried we're gonna get emails from estate agents, phone calls from them. You know what those people are like. But I don't look at the emails. True. <laughs> Fair enough. So, play Fair a record. Enough. Dave no, Jackson, this is the girl. He's not in the charts anymore. I can't, I can't believe it. Unbelievable. Um, you were talking about renting an office. I'm a little bit intimidated because I'm just at the moment thinking about trying to buy a flat or something because sure. I'm just tired of pissing money down the drain. If I, I know. Yeah. And um, uh, but I'm just, I'm really petrified. I've put it off and put it off because I just, I'm really gullible. I'm just, when I'm in confronted with anyone in a suit who sort of knows what they're talking about, they can sell me anything, I'm intimidated, it's like, you know how you're supposed to go in there and you're supposed to sort of act like you're the guy with the money, you're the, this is what I want, this is what I want, no, no, no. But I go in there and it's like I'm afraid they're gonna say, clear off, I don't wanna, s I don't wanna sell you eggs, I'm not yeah. really interested. Have you ever, have you ever thought of like, really putting on sort of like some sort of cool air? Like, uh, <laughs> sort of like kicking the door and going, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> is it like, just, you'd be found out in 30 seconds, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you? Exactly. You'd go in there, you'd stub your toe, and they go, what are you kidding? I can't put my toe, I can't put my toe. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Brilliant. Just tapping yeah. the walls. Yeah, tapping the wall. What's the, uh, what's the rates on? What rates? 
I don't know. <laughs> well, this is, do you remember, I don't know if I told you before, I went, I wanted to buy a laptop computer. Yeah. And everyone said, uh, go up Tottenham Court Road. And I was reading, like, magazines and stuff, they were saying, haggle, make sure you haggle, make sure you got, you're planning to haggle, get the best deal you can. And I found a, a shop which was selling the computer I wanted, and I went in there, and I had this whole plan in my mind of what was gonna happen. He was gonna say, like, it's worth this, I'm gonna go, yeah. well, look, I can get it cheaper here, I wanna buy it from you, I'm gonna haggle, da -da. And off I went. So I went in the shop, and uh, I said, yeah, looking for this, uh, interest in this Toshiba. How much is it? He went, oh, it's 1500 quid. I went, sure, sure. Okay. I said, I'll give you 1300. He went, it's 1500. And I said, sure, but I'm willing to give you 1300. He went, 1500. And I was, I was done already because he hadn't even begun to haggle. And I was assuming he'd at least go 1400 and we could start, but nothing. So now I was screwed. My whole plan went out the window. Yeah. Well, I, you just leave. No, I said to him, I said, the thing is, I can get this computer cheaper down the road, but, you know, I like what you're providing here. I like your service. Uh, I've had good, good, good stuff about you. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. I said, I've heard good stuff about you. And he went, I said, uh, seriously, I can walk down the street. I can buy it there for cheap, for like 1400. And he went, well, see you later then. And I was like, right. So, <laughs> so I, I walked out the place. I said, well, I'm gonna have to leave then. And I walked out the place and, um, of course I wanted to get it from there because it was still the cheapest, so I had to walk back in again. I went, yeah, 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 yeah. I've, um, I've just had some second thoughts. Listen, I'll tell you what, I'll pay the 1500 can I get a free carry case? He went, the carry case is free anyway. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> Carry case is free anyway. nothing. No, but how much would you charge for that if it was on sale? <laughs> carry case a tenner. Well, let's just say it is a tenner. Give it to me for free. And he went, no, it's a tenner. And he went, well, you said it was free a minute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just pathetic. Yeah, that is lovely. It's having to walk out making a big statement and then come back in again. Oh. Oh, and, um, dear. So I just, I'm really scared. I just, I feel like I need someone to come with me and do all the talking. You know, know what they're talking about. Because I don't, I'm not going to be able to tell if there's if there's subsidence or if there's damp or. No, but you don't do that, don't I? Is that not my responsibility? No, you get a survey done. Sure. And did that? They charge for that, and then the. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to go around doing it yourself. Right. Uh, so I could, could I make a saving if I did it myself? <laughs> yeah, this should be all right. Yeah. There's a hole in the wall, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but what's a hole in the wall? <laughs> Put some newspaper in that. Chaucer's day. That was the toilet. <laughs> That'd be fine. <laughs> Carl, you're a second time buyer, aren't you? Bought yeah, yeah, yeah. Bought one in Manchester. Uh, yeah. Lost seven grand on that one. <laughs> Well, don't buy in Manchester. No, it's a good flat. It's just it wasn't. I, I didn't buy it to sort of make money. I thought I was going to be living there like all my life, and then a job came up here, and it was like, oh. You bought your first flat in Manchester. You assumed you would be living there for the rest of your life. Well, I wasn't in a rush. Play record. You're an idiot. Hang on a minute. I, so, have you got a property portfolio? Have you got the two houses, Nick? No, oh, I've got rid of that one. Oh, you sold that one. Got this flat. Seven thousand pounds. Got this flat. I tell you something that is interesting. Hold on, though. What? Um, seven thousand pound lost. Yeah. It, it was flat in Manchester, but it could only cost about eight grand anyway. <laughs> right, Steve. Something you, they, they do now, right? They've got to do by law when you're buying, right? I was looking at one in London, right? Um, it's haunted. They've got to tell you now. Right. Don't talk shit. I'm Sit telling you now. Record. I'm telling you now. Yeah. Yeah. There's no such thing as ghosts. That if that that is ridiculous if that appears on a, a legal document. Right. That is if there's ridiculous. anyone who sells flats and that does that for a living. Yeah. Right. Email in yeah. because I'm telling you now that that is a fact. She sort of dropped it in. She said, "I said, oh, you know, nice, nice feel there," and she said, "Yeah, well, that will be the uh, the ghost. Just dropped it in. That's all they've got to do." And then I was like, "What?" And they went, oh, yeah. That's all I've got to do, is it? So that's the legal thing. Did you drop it in? So in court, you go, did you drop it in? Yeah, I dropped it in. Play a record, you're an idiot. Great, this year's love, if you're in love. I hope it lasts. It's only January. <laughs> uh, Absolutely. what you got? What you got for us, I Steve? just thought we ought to maybe go through some of the emails. I mean, I don't want to query the calibre of some of the emails we get sent on this show, but, um, here's a typical one, Rick. Go on. Um, there's no name, it's just from Glicko. That's his email address. That's uh, just a question to you, Rick. Did I see you walking around Marlebone High Street last Sunday? Yes. Okay. Well, I don't know. Well, I, I, mean, I was in Marlowe High Street last Sunday, yeah. Yeah, but uh, did you see Glicko? I didn't see Glicks. Okay. I didn't see the Glickster. Um, <laughs> All right. but, uh... Alright, this is one from M. Ricky, what do you think of Richard Bacon's show? I can't decide if he's better than you. Uh, nor can I. Any thoughts? Nor can I. I can't help her out on that one. That sure. really, that's a really personal thing. She's got to dig deep. She's got to look at both of us. She's got to find out what she likes. Yeah. And then whether I provide more of that than <laughs> Baker's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, Baker Foyle's brilliant. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to put myself up against him, so uh, I can't have you. Next, Steve, next. Well, there was, what, there was a lot of emails <coughs> last week uh, which were saying how much they enjoyed the Christmas specials. Thank you very much for that. That's very flattering. Cheers. There was also a couple. <laughs> 
There was one, it was a guy, I'm sorry that I, I think I might have deleted it, but oh, I should have said a, a reply, because there was a guy from Canada saying, if there any chance you're around in March, whether you could pop in and have a surprise birthday dinner for his wife. Oh, God, why do you keep that? <laughs> I know, sorry well, I about can't, that. I can't bloody go now, can I, you idiot? <laughs> it's okay. okay. Um, I, I, you know, I don't, um, I really apologise for that. Yeah. Um, there's also, this is interesting, this is more for Carl, really. Um, it seems unlikely. Is it Carl's... from a doctor saying you're an idiot? Uh, we've got plenty of those, I tend to delete them. Okay, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Look at um, his face! No, it just says, uh, you know, don't like to complain, but I won the film competition about five or six weeks ago, oh. and I haven't received my prizes. Oh dear, that's all the Carl, that's all Carl has to do well, on the show. Thinking. We provide the chat, the records, the light entertainment. I mean, you know, glamour. Strokes a comedy genius. Um, all Carl has to do is send out the prizes and say there was a monkey that was a bank robber <laughs> at five to three. <laughs> yeah. What's Carl? Yes, Carl. Um, do you remember her winning? I've got all. I've got all. Were well, you calling her a liar? Well, I am because I don't remember ever seeing. Right, Carl, he's calling her a liar. So Joanne Ogden, you're claiming he's just making this up. She sent this in on a whim, trying to fool us and get some cheap tat. Wow. I don't believe that. I don't believe anyone would lie to try and get knowing me, knowing you on VHS. I really don't. Well, I'll, I'll look in the records because we keep all the details, so, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> well, one of you's in the wrong, and um, do you know what? Knowing you, Carl, I don't think it's Joanne. No. Has, has anyone else ever emailed in saying they haven't got the, uh, like a trap? No, Lindsay they haven't. Time. They haven't. Well, well yeah, so one, one mistake's one too far, because that's one person to know, you, you, you might send out 30, but that one person, that's the first time they've won a competition, they, they, they want the, the history of wind, <laughs> narrated by Donald McIntyre, on VHS, yes. and, you know. Stephen King's It, <laughs> on, on Betamax. Yeah, yeah. No, so they, they, they re sometimes they want the best of primal scream on a cassette. <laughs> exactly. So you know, You've got to make sure you're sending these prizes. Out. <laughs> yeah. Final uh, email from Andy. He says um, the webcam uh, is pointing at the ceiling. Is it because the air conditioning vent is more exciting than what happens on the show? Let's put that down oh, now. That's absolutely <laughs> right. Hold on, hang on. Now, just uh, if someone is that good. People love the webcam. I don't know what they're interested in because all they get is a picture of Carl's big head. It's not a big. It's just round. Oh. Get it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Carl, I'd like you to play the next tune. Um, I've got something a little cheeky, um, primer for the cures, join the dots, it's B-sides and rarities, lots yeah. of stuff from them, from all over the ages. And it's amazing how good their B-sides are, here's one of them playing. Yeah. <laughs> Which was the B-side to close to me. There's nothing amusing about that, Rex, I don't know why you're laughing. Well, it's got a man inside my mouth. Yeah, I know. That's fine. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, the little man inside your head. Yeah. You know, right, if so a man wants to be inside anyone's mouth, that's good, you know, good luck <laughs> to him. Yeah. What? There's uh, uh, wrong with that. But so. I agree. Yeah. Uh, uh, Carl, do you agree with that? What man in your head? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant, isn't it? It's extraordinary. It Look at his face. doesn't even understand schoolboy carry-on innuendo. I know the fact that the play on words is too far then. What does he mean on site, the erection? <laughs> and what? Um, what do you mean, mean dumplings? Huh? You're a fan of The Simpsons. You yeah. know that character in The Simpsons, the, um, gap tooth yokel? Yeah. If I look at Carl when Cletus. he's the black, Cletus. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's, yeah. it's the kind of <laughs> cliche comic book thing of having a mouth wide open <laughs> to suggest scornlessness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's amazing. Or an accommodating come on. Yes. Absolutely. Carl. Oh. That little man inside your head, it's what, you know, if that, people use it as your conscience, don't they? All right. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. No? No. Nope. No? Okay. I was, uh, Rick, I was <laughs> watching Moonraker. Uh, it was on, I think it was last week. Yeah. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with the James Bond films. I have never, I don't think I've ever watched a Bond film from beginning to end. Yeah. I've never watched one on DVD, and I've never gone to the cinema to watch one, and uh, I'm not usually in on Easter Saturday. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, 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 so the thing about James Bond, when I was younger, I, I thought he was amazing. I just thought he was the ultimate cool, sophisticated hero. Do you know what I mean? My dream as a kid, like when I say kid, I mean a teenager, was to come home, which invariably he did. He'd come back to his hotel suite, he'd open the door, there'd be a trail of clothes, and he'd follow yeah. it, he'd go into the bedroom, and there'd be a beautiful woman in the bed, you know. You'd have said, clean up, what, <laughs> what are you doing? You're messy. <laughs> And as I say, I used to think he was really cool and sophisticated, and it's only of late that I've sort of watched, you've revisited these films, and it's, I'll tell you what, it's his jokes. Oh! 
He is the oh, most it's infuriating man, man yeah. ever. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know why people in the films consider him so- I mean, I, I think the reason that women in the films are always being seduced by him is because, if you notice, they're normally- they normally got English as a second language. Right. So they don't understand, they don't so when he's rare. making those jokes- So they don't know when he goes, uh- uh, just keeping the British end up. Yeah, I'm just attempting re-entry. Yeah. If that was a British woman, she'd be going, what? what yeah, are you talking don't about? say you that. That sounds bastard. awful, and it's a terrible it's poem, It's so rude, what am I? Yeah, what am I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they just laugh. Well, they just laugh coquettishly and then, yeah, yeah. you know, unzip their dress normally. Yeah. <laughs> but some of the guys, there was one where he's, uh, He's being chased by a guy in a moped or something, and the guy plummets off a cliff and smashes through a van which is full of feathers, and he plummets to his death, and Bond just says, all those feathers, and he still couldn't fly. What are you talking about? <laughs> what do you mean? It's not a joke. It's just words. Uh, There's one where he, in Moonraker, where he punches this guy, he's having a fight, he punches him through a plate glass window, and he lands on a piano, and Bond goes, play it again, Sam. <laughs> The one, uh, I remember there's the one in one uh, of the early films where he, he kill he, he throws a guy in the bath and electrocutes him by throwing in a um oh, uh, a thing and then he goes sh sh absolutely sh shocking. shocking. But yeah. I'm just thinking you just killed a man. I know you're well, a he's... psychopath. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. It's just, it's just so excruciating. <laughs> if someone was doing those kind of jokes in the office, yeah, you yeah. would hate them. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. wouldn't want to talk to them. They'd be a bore. I know. Yeah. Everything. Everything's, everything's a little a one liner. liner. I know. And everything's a pun. Yeah. But I tell you what, there is a bloody good secret agency. <laughs> So, you know, they're, they're not hired for their, um, you know, wit and, uh, you know, stand-up ability. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, you know, it swings and roundabouts. Yeah. I yeah. doubt Johnny Vegas could, uh, save the world. That's true enough, yeah. So, uh, think on. Different people, different needs. <laughs> California waiting on XFM 104.9. Do you know what, Steve? We get emails and, uh, you know, we got our posters up around this show and, uh, people enjoy it. But I don't think we get the credit we deserve for picking the music. It's true. Because we're totally unplaylisted, and I don't know if people know about this, that m mine and Steve's sort of first passion before comedy is probably music. We're really, really, we love playing each other sort of records and that. And maybe when we come back, we should do a show where there is no pressure to, you know, like, Carl doesn't press the buttons for us, pre-record it, where we just swap each other's sort of ideas for music. It'd be like, uh, the Ricky Gervais compilation tape. Well, sort of like, we're not, we're not talking John Peel, where we try and find obscure Belgian jungle mm. and do demos. You know, everything from, you know, Kings of Leon, Lou Reed, you know, maybe a bit of 80s stuff that people yeah, have forgotten yeah, yeah. about. Beautiful something. songs, beautiful songs. So what do you think? I'd love to do that, Rick. I mean, I genuinely, I, there's nothing more exciting to me than introducing to someone a song which they then that go on and they love and they listen, maybe they buy the album, da 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 da. But that's something to think about, maybe, for later. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like you say, the, the pressure to kind of come up with some, you know, um, high calibre chat yeah. between each record, it is, it takes the toll. But, um, you know? yeah, and that, that's, that's, you know, it's, it's a passion of ours and we'd love to, but, 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 but now, it's Rockbusters. Can I just say something now, before we do Rockbusters, a lot of people sort of, they come up to me, they say, Steve, we like the show, when are you gonna get rid of Rockbusters? It's, it brings it down. I, I'm not joking. That. I'm not joking, there is lots of people. Come so, on, let, let, let speak. Come off it. Come off it. What? I know people who say, you're never gonna stop that, are you? <laughs> so, <laughs> one of us is lying again. <laughs> Well, not really. You, you know, I, I, oh, I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who've listened to the show. You're talking about Suzanne, <laughs> your uh, girlfriend. Oh, uh, Martin. He, he'll be at home now with a pad, getting ready <laughs> to play. But I should just. Max to... Freeman did, did say, did encourage Carl on a couple of occasions. He even tried to get him through with the answer egg when we were doing that naming animal round. Yes. So. But I should just say that people, they people think that somehow Ricky and I are endorsing Rockbusters. That somehow by allowing it on the show somehow we think it's good or we appreciate it. And I need to point out that it's more like when a child comes back from school and they've done a painting. Yeah. It's crap. Yeah. But of course you've got to stick it on bigger the than the house. <laughs> you've got to stick it yeah. on the fridge because otherwise it's, the kids can exactly. get upset. In this next episode, you've got to remember the cat is bigger than the house. <laughs> exactly. It's, okay. It doesn't look like anything. The humans don't have bodies, their legs come straight from their heads. Yeah. Mummy and daddy. Please welcome to the stage, Carl Pilkington's Rockbusters. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so, uh, cryptic clues, no, initials, cryptic. and you work Rubbish it out, clue. and you email in and that. Yeah. First one. Yeah. Uh, don't be stealing my tools. Take your sister's. <laughs> Alright, and the initials N-K. Don't be so, stealing my tools. Take my sister's. Yeah, so that's like the cryptic clue, and the initials of the artist or band is N-K. Mm -hmm. Alright? Second one. Buy it if you want, not bothered. Think about it. Come back. <laughs> right, come back if you want. <laughs> Start again, guys! Right, start that second one again. Right, well, you can back. <laughs> it's different, it's different. 
Well, the first one was uh, bite if one. Now this one was uh, yeah. Well, write it down. Bite. Right, right. Do it. Do it. If it's a cryptic clue, all the letters count. Do it. Buy it if you want. I'm not that bothered. You know, think about it. Come back. Check some other places out first before you. you know. <laughs> So we've got no- we've got no time for other clues. Right. right. So that's S-C. Right, S -C. right that, do that clue again. Buy it if you want. I'm not- I'm not- I'm not fussed, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Think about fast. it. Fast! Fast is making the appearance! Fast wasn't there before! Do the clue again. Do the clue again! <laughs> Initials SC for that one. Do the clue again. I don't want to do it again. Do you haven't finished it yet? I have, that's it. No, do the clue again. <laughs> I can't do, it again. do the clue again. Well, I'll bite if you want. I'm not fussed, right? Chop around. <laughs> come back. It's up to you. I'm not. I'm not pushing you into anything. It's right? up to you. It wasn't there. S S C S C oh, for that one, dear. right? And the final one. Uh, <laughs> that's good. I can play ten pin bowling again. <laughs> oh, okay. And what's oh, the clue? Well, that's that's O for that oh, one. O. Oh. Oh. All right, so uh, okay. Okay. Now I assume that I'm not going to bother to look, but I assume there's a, there's a <laughs> jiffy bag of tax yeah. which people can win. <laughs> All right, well, great, good luck. Uh, um, Ricky Dot Gervais at xfm.co.uk is the email address. Play record. Thorns. No, bye. If you want, I'm not fussing. Come back, have a look around. I'm, not, I'm open Wednesdays, by the way. Shut up, Thorns. And no blue sky. Um, off their album uh, of last year, which is probably my favourite album of, of the year. I've started getting into that sort of like music, more serious thing. In yeah. case we do it. I mean, when, I don't when, know, from, from that comment, maybe we should do some preparation. Pre- pre-record it? Yeah. So we can sort of like, cut all the ums and ahs and- like that's me, And there. me sort of like, eating a sandwich yeah. while it's on. Yeah. Singing along, tapping a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I won't lay down like this either. We'll get me a chair that I can sort of be upright so I can enunciate. You weren't in the room, were you, when um, Carl was singing along to Oliver's army? No. It was a joy. Checkpoint Charlie. Oliver's army. No idea. Oh, bless him. Rockbusters, well on the way. Any uh, any right answers yet, Carl? Just check. We see we got one email. One email. No. No, because they probably don't make sense. Yeah, no, no, no responses whatsoever. There's some on the tax and that. Really? 83 XFM if you want to do it on the old, uh, tax. Speak up, Carl. You can do not it on, just on the radio. Steve, no, we're on the radio, yeah, we're just, live. Just letting you know, do it on the text if you want. Send it in on the text. And what? <laughs> well, what is it? Say it! 83 XFM. Right. Right. What's the email address again? Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Are you tired today, Carl? Are you just bored or...? No, no, I'm alright, I'm good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Steve. Yeah, well, no, I just, I, <laughs> I just wanted to mention to you, I went to, um, a pub near my house recently. I found out that there was a, a, a pool hall. Oh, yeah. Join, like a pool club there. And I love pool. I love, I, you know, I, I like to think of myself as looking a little bit like Paul Newman in The Hustler. Yeah. When I'm shooting pool. Yeah. And, um, I, I went down there and I, I went with my flatmate and, uh, it's quite a seedy pub in many respects. There's a lot of weird people in there, like, alcoholics and- Why did they know, go there? It's strange, isn't it? Weird, isn't it? Yeah. Go on. And, um, very, very odd people. And, um, so he's a little bit nervous. And he said, I'm a bit worried because there's a lot of kind of, you know, there's people from the estate, the sure. nearby council estate, you know. Yeah, yeah. For want of a better word, scum. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so he's a bit edgy. And, uh, bizarrely, I, because I saw what other people, I said to him, um, he went, I'm a bit scared about going in. I went, don't worry, you're with me. Yeah. I don't know what, I, think, I don't know what that means. They're yeah. going to think, oh, wait a minute, the six foot guy with the, the lanky guy with the glasses, yeah. they're not going to mess with him. They, they, you go there, they take your glasses off and you go, I've lost. Exactly. That's this it, is, I'm out of here. This is why I've never got into a fight, because if, if my glasses are gone, are I'm you, screwed. That's the first are thing you, you really, do. You're really gone short sighted, aren't you? I'd be absolutely done for. And are you nervous without, are you sort of like nervous yes. without them? You know, what, whenever you. you you know whenever you see like uh, a kind of action film or whatever, or maybe like a horror film? The nerd loses glasses, glasses, and glasses and he's scrabbling around on the floor is that you, is it? Are coming behind him. That's me. Really? Yeah, done for. Absolutely done for. Well, uh, what did you do when you were at school and you had to play tennis or football or rugby or something? Um, kept them on. That's dangerous, Well, of course it? it is. That's why I was never, you know, as good at rugby as I probably could have been. <laughs> you know, because of course you can. How can you play rugby with glasses on? I'm in the scrub going, careful! <laughs> Your boots. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Never mind me, nads. Exactly. Watch my glasses. <laughs> but uh, so I went in there because I used to um, 
I used to do uh, judo when I was very young. Well, that's the impossible. But this is ludicrous. That must go falling off. Oh, of course. What about gaffer tape? Just sort of like <laughs> round. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Well, I, did, so I bought something like a kind of a sports strap to keep them on, and they just it just pushed them right into my eyes. I could barely see. Uh -huh. I was all <laughs> blinded. <laughs> but I swear, when I used to go to judo, I'm sure that the other kids were being taught. Right, just knock Steve's glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> Knock his glasses off, you can get him. <laughs> oh, and, um, dear. And, uh, so I, I'm always a bit edgy about fights, but for some reason I felt super confident going in there. I was like, I swaggered in, and, uh, into the pool hall. And it's one of those places you've got sort of knock, it's like a speakeasy, you've got a knock yeah. and they open the door and you come in. Yeah. And, um, uh, I'm in there and, uh, my <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of those things you slide, uh, like a little letter box, they exactly. slide over. And you knock, knock, yeah, shut <laughs> up. <laughs> you put your face there, you just knocked your glasses off. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so I went in there and, um, in a way, my flatmate was justified in being a little bit edgy because, um, the conversation we could overhear, uh, <laughs> the table next to us, we were playing pool, the guy next to us was going, um, yeah, of course, the bloody police spent Boxing Day in the nick. Absolute nightmare. <laughs> you getting nervous? So I was getting a little bit edgy because I didn't know. But I, then I thought, you know, they don't mess with their own. We're yeah. like we're almost like gangsters ourselves because we're there in the lion's yeah, yeah. den. Do you know what I mean? We'll probably be fine. So then, um, there's just an old guy serving at the bar, you know, in his fifties, and some guys go over to the jukebox. Some young kids. They're just hanging out in the pool hall. They're pretty cool. They put some money in the jukebox. And in first track, Coldplay. Fine. I'm thinking that's nice. I'm playing pool. Second track, hardcore German techno. <laughs> and they and they put in about. Fifty quids worth, it seemed, because it just went on. Oh, doo, 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 oh doo. really thumping, kind of like gabba stuff. Doo, 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 doo. Old guy at the bar just <laughs> nodding his head, cleaning the glass. Yeah. So into this piano comes, player, furious. Exactly. <laughs> into this comes like what appear to be a family of holiday makers with kids. So they've entered this like seedy pool hall. Um, we've got you know the Cray twins playing pool next to me. They come in, the German techno's blaring. They come in, and there's like kids, you know, and they've got the baby in one of those little pouches, and they, oh, right. da, da, da. they sit down. And um, the weirdest thing was one of the kid, one of the guys, the uncle, let's say of the of the family, he, he picked up the kid and he put he was about to put the baby down in a chair. And I thought, hang on, that's quite quite a, quite a hard backed chair. And as he did it, the baby's head just went <laughs> and hit the back of the chair, <laughs> and I uh, just flipped back and hit the back of the chair because he just lumped it down. Oh in the God! Head. And it started screaming, it crying, you know. And the um, teenagers were rocking to that. They loved it. And um, and he came over, and, and it was transparent what had happened. And the mum was going, "What's happened?" The baby's crying. And he went, "I don't know what happened." <laughs> and I wanted to lean over and go, "You lying swine! You, you know what happened? You just hear yourself." I wanted to go, just take her aside and say, "Never let him handle your baby again." No, the head was wobbling the around. Was he wobbling put it on just head, I could see it come in. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? He might turn out like Carl now. I, at that's a point. But oh. what do you do in those situations? You know, do you? Do you well, the, I, I'm assuming by the way you're taking it lightly, the baby wasn't hurt in any way. He the just baby made his. Well, then. But it was still a bit wrecked. You keep out of it, don't you? I what are you going to so. do? Call the authorities and go, it was him. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to name the place in case I get knifed. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I imagine you trying to swagger it when you overheard him talking about the Nick. I imagine you know me going, yeah, pigs. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, I ate the pigs as well. No, I'm a lawyer. I was down there going, <laughs> exactly. oh yeah, oh yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> Oh dear. But, so, um, uh. I'll be going back there. I so feel like I'm that's it. I mean, I've told you before, Steve, stay away from working class people and bad men in trainers. Because, you know, you hang around with nerdy wells and you're going to get your glasses knocked <laughs> off. That's true. All over DJ on XFM 104.9. Carl, now, Carl, you promised me that you were going to reintroduce Educating Ricky. Yeah, I'll just. Yeah, we can do that. Have you got it? Have you, have you got something that will, um, that's something that I won't know that's correct and that will interest me? Um, yeah, there's loads of stuff. Is it anything to do with monkeys? No, we've got, we've got monkey news. We've got monkey news coming up, of course we have. Monkey news people are there. Now, now over to, uh, XFM for monkey news with Carl Pilkington. <laughs> no, we won't All do right? that yet. We're not doing no. that yet. Um, Educating Ricky is... Yeah. Well, let's uh, do it. Let's do it ed ages ago. Educating Ricky. Oh, that's interesting, and it's correct. Hang on a minute, though. What I do is I tease you, don't I, with headlines? Oh, go on then. And then you have yeah. to sort of go. That one sounds good. Go on then. What? what I, I want to know more about that. Educate me. Yeah. Right. Okay. You've got. Uh, well. Jeez. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh. That that Nelly died. <laughs> 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 that Nelly died. Oh, like, okay. Okay. Right. Could so be about an elephant. Yeah. Go on. You've got that. You've got. Uh, well, uh... I've got well. D d take well for as red. So they all start with well, okay? <laughs> Knob body has been that lucky before. <laughs> Brilliant, all right. Okay. Uh, oh, you've got, get a lobe of this court case. 
<laughs> right, okay. Not I, I'm going for nobody has been that lucky before. Right, it's a story about this kid who was born, right? Uh, was he? Yeah, he was, he was bopped out, like, and the dad and the mum saw the baby and he was like, oh, that's a good-looking little kid. Sure. And they were proud of that. And then, uh, I know, like, they're surprised that it's a good-looking little kid, it's yeah, theirs. Yeah. Like, it could've been a, uh, it could've been a frog, and they'd have gone, oh, he's got your eyes. And then, uh, the doctor goes, yeah, it is, but, uh, look at that. What? He said, it's a boy, and, uh, hasn't got a knob. <laughs> I love the doctor saying that. <laughs> I love this GP. Right. Or oh, this midwife saying that. Oh, I love little boy, yeah. Yeah, but no knob, baby. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. I, 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 I mean, think. Right. No, but I'm speeding it up a bit. All right, come on. So the baby's right, so born. The baby's like that. And the doctor says, says that. And the woman's like, oh, it's our first as well. And stuff, right? She's really gutted. She's What's the second gonna be like? So, uh. Your head. So, <laughs> just a knob. Doctor <laughs> says, yeah. <laughs> Look like Carl. <laughs> Well, right, so, go on. Um, so the doctor says, well, I'll leave it with you for a bit, get used to the idea, right? <laughs> <laughs> As opposed to throwing it away. So he wanders off. Yeah. He comes back with a smile on his face. Right? Found the knob. So the mum and dad are like, what's, what, you know, what are you smiling about? He says, you're not going to believe this. Baby's just been born. It's got two. <laughs> right? You can have one of them. And they did a little, uh, <laughs> little operation. Where did you get this information from? That's in a book. <laughs> What book? Is, is it the same as the book? book that you carry round with you? No. With the woman with three legs, the, the juggler with nine arms, and the bloke who found shagging a chicken under a rock. <laughs> is it in that book? Well, weird though, isn't it? Well, it's not true. It is true. What? In the same hospital, there was a baby born with that, no. and I'm luckily the, no. the, it's Carl. <laughs> it happened. But you're not, you swear to God you're not making- The doctor came back smiling, because you don't believe it. There's a, yeah. there's a baby there with an excess of a knob. It happened, honestly. I'm not- all these things are not made up, the- the educating stuff. That's- that's why I do it, isn't it? Teaching you stuff. Always teaching you stuff. Yeah, <laughs> Alright, if anyone can confirm the baby with no the, knob, they're gonna the baby confirm because they're gonna go to the same dubious website that Carl got it from. I always try to be level-headed and reasonable in these situations. And it's you always, always, it's always it. Guatemala or Mexico. A Rodriguez there was born without a knob. Luckily, baby next door, and then and, and, uh, I was one two knobs. <laughs> what a load of shite! Play a record. You. There's still more to come. Oh, I'm looking forward nice. to. Was it Nelly? Nelly dead. It, it, Nelly, it, Nelly died. It, Nelly died. Radiohead your head off the Benz album. Mm -hmm. I mean, might be my favourite album of all time. You said it before, yeah. I yeah. can't say I've ever really got into it. I remember when it came out, it was just so ubiquitous everywhere. I never really bothered listening. I to can it. still listen to it every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, that might be sad. I don't know, it but it's right. a fantastic album. Yeah. Mm. On XFM 104.9, just practicing for when we uh, talk about music. talk more about music than maybe monkeys and people born without knobs, <laughs> baby. Uh, Carl, any other thoughts? Uh, well, I'm not. I'm not gonna. Tell you any more educating stuff yet. You're gonna tease me with that, are you? Leave you with, uh, it Nelly died. Yeah. And get a load of this court case, right? But I want you <laughs> thinking about. Yeah, thinking about it, yeah, just getting my red juices ready. Think about that. Yeah, like an aperitif, yeah, yeah, sure. But, um, I've just educated you. Yeah. Right? And I watched The Office Christmas stuff on, uh, last Sunday. Did you like to enjoy it? I think it was good. Good. I think it was good. Thank it was you very up much. There with one of my favourites. The yeah. second one. Second one's good. Yeah, okay. Your second one. Um, more, more the paybacks in the second one. The first one's more set up. Yeah. So, you know, I'd have thought people would like the second one more. Yeah. So that's nice. That's a nice yeah. critique. Thank you, Carl. Um, but there was something in it you did about cavemen. Cavemen? You said something about, um, it was a fact about cavemen and you sort of only half did it. You didn't give the full information, like, what kind of doing that? You just, you, you just... Where was it? What bit was it? Um, it was... It was the bit when you were talking about getting a woman, I think, or you were talking about breasts or... Oh, oh, the one when I said people are, the reason women have cleavage is it reminds men of buttocks because when we were cavemen we used to do you from behind. Yeah. Yeah, at the date, blind date, yeah. Is that a joke or...? Well, I was hoping it was funny. We were... Oh, you mean, um, no, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I think I did. I think cleavage is meant me to represent, in a sort of Desmond Morris pop sort of anthropology type way, I think I, I've seen that before, that um, cleavage represents 
um, buttocks. And I imagine, you know, cavemen probably did do it from behind. <laughs> I, I don't know what you want to know, Carl, really. It was, it's in a sitcom. It, it wasn't a documentary. <laughs> it looked like one. Yeah, 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 it yeah. Wasn't. Brilliantly directed to look like one, I'll yeah. give you that. Mm. <laughs> no, but what you're saying to blokes like... Yeah, cause I think cleavage uh, is represented like uh, buttocks because obviously buttocks were much more of a sexual organ, evolutionary speaking. Breasts were to actually bring up, uh, um, to suckle young, but, uh, and, and were a sign of sexual maturity so you're ready to mate, but whereas... Carl, I'm not an anthropologist, mate. I'm struggling here. What do you need no, to know? But, but yeah, I imagine, I imagine, I imagine that the cleavage reminds you of an ass. I... Right. Well, if if it's all about ass, why don't gays like a little bit of tit? <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? Ah, <laughs> oh, you've done me. <laughs> ah. So the question put to us today on XFM 104.9, please call me like dollars, is if it's all about ass, <laughs> then like why don't gays like a little bit of tit? I was worried. If, if it's all were... about ass, why don't gays like tit? If it's all about ass, why don't gays like tit? <laughs> Just call in with your. <laughs> Thanks uh, very much for tuning in. This has uh, been Children's TV. If it's all about ass, why don't gays like tit? It's, uh, it's still been an hour and a quarter before we got round to gays, so it's good to see later the parents. If it's all about ass, why don't gays like a bit of tit? <laughs> no, is the question, what a brilliant question. Well, if, if you're an anthropologist or a, 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 a psychologist, a doctor, a gay, <laughs> please call in. If it's all about ass, <laughs> this is the question. I'm not convinced by this whole, um, Cleavage looks like an ass. That's no, why not to Steve. I nor think, am I. I it's, think it's, a bit of mock, it's a bit of mock. Uh, I, I didn't think it would be under scrutiny. I uh, think it's more likely that the reason men find cleavage attractive is because they know there's a lovely pair of bristles down there. Yeah, so like, like, oh, they go, here we are. If that's, if that's what's on show, <laughs> exactly. Imagine what, what's down below. If that's in the front window, right? <laughs> yeah, what's she got to go into the shop? Bill Mackay on XFM. 104.9. If it's all about asses, Steve, why don't gays like a bit of tit? I think the- there might be a lecture on that yeah. at uh, the Royal Institute tonight. I'm oh, not sure. <laughs> Stephen Hawking. Yeah, I think he's given a lecture. Brilliant. I'll tell you something else, though. That's about caveman and that. Yeah. Right? Uh, mm, not really. Go on. Do you know, um... I love the idea of a little gay fella. It's- he's pulled a bird. He's just- he, all he's done is focused on the cleavage and he's gone, that's a lovely ass. Yeah. Right? He's got a back. Why do? Do, 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 do. Pulls the dress down. No! Where's the ass? <laughs> I've been gone. There's boobs! Boobs! I hate them! Ah, they're my worst! No! <laughs> right, sorry, Carl. Caveman and that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Back to it. Doesn't drop a beat, does he? Do you know, like, when, when you get a bit scared and, yeah. you, and the air's on your back and that sort of go up? Well, I haven't got a particularly hairy back, but go on. No, but on your neck or oh, whatever. Yeah. 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 On um, your head. Do you know? <laughs> not in your place, but sure. <laughs> Do you know where that comes from? Do you know why that happens? Why it happens? Yeah. To probably to look more fierce. Yeah. Probably residue of like the erectile tissue would that you know um, would make you look aped, and that would make you look slightly bigger, your outline bigger. Yeah. Is that it? Is that the answer? Yeah, just cavemen in front of dinosaurs and that. This sort of went oh. <laughs> and then, well, it wasn't cavemen in front of dinosaurs, was it? Because cavemen weren't alive when dinosaurs were alive. There was a couple knocking about. Right. Okay. Fair enough. There was there was a crossover point, surely. No. Uh, not dinosaurs like fifteen you know. million. Um, was the uh, yeah probably the uh, yeah the ice age. There were still there no, were still big reptiles. I think it's fairly common knowledge that the dinosaurs did not exist. Well, who when... gave the dinosaurs a name? Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, no, no. <laughs> who gave the dinosaurs no, I don't know. the names? He's listen. He's using he's using cavemen as any genus of homo. It, I, right. I know he's thinking of the Flintstones, <laughs> yeah. but I'm giving him a bit of, I'm giving him like, you know, you know a, an instep into evolution here. But, um... I should just point out, you know cavemen didn't have cars which they motored by running along the street. <laughs> and they didn't, they didn't mix cement in pelicans. You're, you're aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go on, Carl. Um, shall we have the Rockbusters answers? Yeah, We've got to get that attacked out of the way. I'd love to. Uh, number one was, don't be stealing my tools. Take your sisters. The initials were NK. That was Nick Ursaw, right? Nick Ursaw? Nick Ursaw. 80s. I don't know, I know, I've never heard of that band. Nick Kershaw. Nick Kershaw? Oh, no, oh Nick yeah, Nick Kershaw, yeah. Nick, oh, sorry, what, what, Nick I don't Kershaw understand it. Nick, how does Nick Kershaw? Second one. No, 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 don't move on! 
Nick Ersaw. What's Nick Ersaw? <laughs> Jesus. All right. It doesn't the count. It's not a clue. Clue. But let's just leave it behind us, all right? Second one was, uh, buy it if you want. You know, I'm not bothered. You can think about it. Come back, have a, have a look around, think it over. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not fussed. The initials were SC. That was soft cell. Right? That works. Yeah. Well done. That works. Right. And that's good. I can, uh, I can play some pin bowling again. That's O. That's outcast. All right? What does that mean? Outcast? You're out, you, you, you broke your arm. No? Right? Uh, got the oh, cast that's off ridiculous. It. <laughs> that's ludicrous. I mean, that's ridiculous. You broke your arm, you were in a cast, you got rid of the cast, you're outcast. Did yes, anyone yeah. get that? Yeah. I mean, I am stunned. I think, to be fair, that was because how many bands begin with O? Yeah. I think that's why people got it. Exactly. But they were guesses, yeah. I could probably make Oasis work if I tried hard enough. We've done that. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, oh, so, uh, Outcast. That's ridiculous. Why is it ridiculous? But it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Worse than that. What's worse than that? Leap to we worse than that! <laughs> <laughs> Imagine no, I remember, that! I remember, I remember when I did my wrist in, then it fixed, I went temping bowling. Why did you do your- why so, did you do your So it's what you did? Brilliant. So, next week's quiz is what am I thinking? You're an idiot, Carl. Play who's, a record. Winner, so why did you do your wrist in? <laughs> crash. I had a, bit a, of a what? crash. Had crash. A crash. You had a crash? Yeah. That sounds like a story we've not explored. Not much to it. I just went on a free, uh, sort of rally day. <laughs> uh, got in this car. I'd been working all night, right, so I wasn't the best condition to be whizzing around a track <laughs> in a car. Sure. Uh, like a Formula One type car. Yeah. Uh, span out of control, hit some mud, smashed it all in, uh, wrote it off, and I didn't realise I'd done a load of damage until... Well, you landed on your head, but you were fine. <laughs> yeah. Who's the winner? Mike Godley. <laughs> <laughs> we are indeed. Alright. Yeah. Carl, what you got lined up for us now? Um, right, well, you've got a choice. Nelly dead? You can have a bit of educating. Yeah, that's how educating, come on. Educating uh, Ricky. I sh can we just clarify what this is? I think a lot of new listeners perhaps don't- aren't familiar with this. It's when Carl looks on the internet and finds a weird story about, um, you know, the, the double- double knob, um, fun, and tells me about it, and it's usually not true. <laughs> okay. If it is true, I know it already. <laughs> Go on then, Carl. Um, they're not really weird stuff, it's just stuff that's gone on. That's yeah. interested me, that's all it's yeah. about, and I right. educate about it. I should just confirm that we've had a number of emails that say the baby born without a knob and then having one transplanted from a baby that luckily enough had two knobs yeah. is apparently true. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. listen, yeah. listen, so, uh, I, I don't question that you could be born with a deformity and get someone's, you know, fingers, knobs, uh, what I'm saying is, it didn't happen with a doctor goes, I'll leave with it, I, I don't believe it, that baby's got two knobs. <laughs> exactly. What a coincidence. <laughs> I bet that little bit of information isn't in there, is it? Sure. That he went out the door, I'm gonna get a coffee, came back, uh, bloody hell, hold on, look, there's an extra knob, I found an extra knob. <laughs> uh, it, we, we can put that knob on there, perfect. Right, well you've gone, you've, uh, you've opted for the headline, it nearly died. Right? Yeah. It's about this elephant. Yeah. Um, 80 years old. Yeah. In Africa. Yeah. Right, it's had quite a good life and that. Yeah. Um, but then what happens is, I don't know what it's been eating. But, um, his teeth fall out. Yeah, that's what the- out of most elephants die of that because they grind them down, the- the teeth, until they can't chew anymore and they- most yeah. elephants of old- uh, dying of old age with an elephant is the fact that you haven't got teeth anymore. Hmm. Well, it's not a good innings, it was 80. Yeah. Right? Um, so anyway, They used so... to pop the food up and feed it to it and it lived quite happily? No, what they did was, the village got together, said, uh- oh, Chewed the food for that's it. That's sad, isn't it? Um, made it some false, false teeth. teeth. Made it some teeth. Out of wood. Wooden teeth. For this elephant, that's 80. <laughs> what do you think of that? I don't know. I don't know if it's true, I don't know. I mean. No, it is. Forget that. You've been proved wrong once. It is true. What do you think about that? Oh, it, but it, Carl, it's like saying, yeah, me auntie Nora saw a ghost. What do you think about that? There's no comment. I can't comment on it. Would you have gone to the trouble, is what I'm saying? To build an elephant some it's teeth. It's 80, it's 80. Yeah. With all the problems Africa's got and that, and they're messing about making teeth for an elephant. What problems have Africa got? Well, there's not enough food to go around, so if an elephant's dead, that's a bit more food left. <laughs> 
Do you know what I mean? Why? Yeah, but you're assuming this is in the middle of a village where there was famine and starvation. Um, it might have been. It, it might have been South Africa, Kenya. Uh, you don't know. It's not all. It's not all Ethiopia. If or it was a busy city. People in the village wouldn't have time to be messing about with making teeth and that, would they? It was a little village. <laughs> a little village. Yeah. And a local elephant. The local elephant. Like, at local post office, I'll meet you by the elephant. No, to be fair, Rick, I think I saw Bob Geldof on TV saying, please, people, stop making elephants' teeth. Uh, they are eating all the food, we're sending it over there. We're the number, where's the teeth? <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't know, it's possible. Send us the I mean, teeth. it's possible, it's possible they've made this elephant some, some, uh, some dentures. It is possible. Wouldn't yeah. it have been easier to just... Pulp it. Exactly. I'd have thought... It up, serve it some soup or whatever. Yeah, I mean, if you're making its teeth, you know, it's a village. So I'd, I'd have thought, it's a, you know, I wouldn't have thought it would work for very long and I wouldn't have thought the elephant uh, would understand that it was teeth. So uh, I, I wouldn't have been able to thought that the villagers could do it. I mean, top veterinary surgeons could have done some that, but I think they made it all goodwill, but I don't want to have thought it worked, so they probably end up dying or pulping it like I suggested. But, you know, thanks very much. Play a record. No, uh, but didn't you say something about wooden teeth? Someone, you know, a wooden teeth. Mm. I don't know, I think that was possibly my grandparents. They had wooden teeth? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was wooden. I think the palate was wood, and then the teeth were as you would normally That's <laughs> like so, from the 16th century, though, isn't well, it? Well, it was, it was the 1940s. They used to hammer them in without anaesthetic. Really? Yeah. Just to <sighs> no, put into the roots so it wouldn't- oh, God. That's, that's a rubbish time, isn't it? To leave. And, that's right. and, and, and other people's teeth, other dead people's teeth, you could replace it, just that- just bang it in for a while. Oh. Oh, God, unbelievable. Oh, dear. Play a record, Carl. If you've had your teeth, if you've had teeth hammered into your gums. Right, okay, you got the final educating Ricky, Carl. Uh, get a load of this court case. Yep. <laughs> uh, what happened was, right, uh, allegedly. F fellas in court for something that he shouldn't have done, right? Yeah. You got all the detail, then, at your fingertips. And the jury says, uh, He's guilty, right? And the judge went, what? He's not guilty. Off you go then, right? He misheard it. Um, yeah. he couldn't do anything about it because once, once the judge has sort of said, you're not guilty, off you go. Off you go, you can go home. And the jury were like, what, what, are, you, hey, what are you doing? He said he's, he's guilty. And he's like, what, what do you think of the Thorns album? I'm quite a big fan, Rick. Yeah, I like that sort of alt country sound. I think. I know. Uh, I like a compilation you made me. That was that sort of thing. really good. The Jayhawks. Thanks for that. By no, the way, it was the hanging one, wasn't it? There was the hanging one that happened. Are you still there? Um, have you, what, what bands have you got been checking out recently? Any new? Oh, things? just exploring all kinds of stuff. Obviously, you know, I like dipping back into the old stuff. I've tell you, what, I've been appreciating a lot recently, Rick. Billy Bragg. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, yeah great guy. Great guy. Isn't he playing? Isn't he playing? He's playing in March. Yeah, you might want to try. You heard about the Angin one when, the, when the fellow was sorry, mate. Go, go on. When the fellow was hung. And, well, hung. Uh, he, he was hung and uh, hung. He, he was, sorry, was hung. He was hung by a rope. So isn't that? No, no. I think it was. Wasn't he uh, a Chinese emperor? <laughs> and the I mean, wasn't he hung? Yeah. Sorry, was sorry. He was hung. Some fellow who'd done something. They the hung him. And, <laughs> Oh, it's not a word anymore. He was on. Well, don't be doing that again, because you said squoze wasn't a word, and then I showed you a menu today that someone sent, and it said fresh orange. Yeah. Squoze. It's inverting commas, and next to it was the word colour, spout C-O-L-O-R. So, presumably either American menu, right, in which case there's loads of American words that we don't use, or it's just a badly typed piece of work. Anyway, there was a bloke that was on. He was hung on that, uh, but he, he didn't die. Hung on that, he was definitely a Chinese. Yeah, hung on yeah. that, yeah. I remember him now, yeah. He didn't die, and they said, oh, just hang on a minute whilst we change the rope and that, and he stood there waiting, changed yeah. the rope. They, uh, tried to, you know, do it again, and, uh, didn't work. It didn't work, right. So, uh, yeah. um, they got another rope, right? No. Didn't work, and, uh, and then they, they had to let him go because it's like a there's a well known saying or something from from this thing. Yeah. Do what? You, have you seen um? Have you do you like uh, Oh My Car Is On by um so you know, Tim Burton's new single? I don't know that. Right, I'm it's brilliant. Can we play it a bit later? Know. Yeah, can we play it. Um, let's play a record now and we'll um, we'll um talk more of it later. Yeah. Hey, can you, Carl? Would you um? Would you shut? Tim Burgess, brilliant. XFM 104.9. Right. Well, uh, we're running out of time here. Yeah. We had Carl in a little film, but. I think we've really got time for monkey news, you know? Yeah. What are you thinking, Carl? Yeah, if you wanna do that. Yeah, let's do monkey news.
Alright. Play uh, the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that, monkey news. Uh, right, there's this monkey, right? Oh, yeah. I think his name was number six or number seven or something, right? In this, in this lab, right? Yeah. And, uh, anyway, it's in there. <laughs> uh, with, like, you know, the rabbits and little mice and stuff like that. And, uh... The, the rabbit smoking. The nurse, right? The nurse, not, well, not the nurse, the, the, the woman who works in the lab, what would you call her? The nurse? Depends. What, what turns out her job was. If she was a lab assistant, you call her a lab assistant. Right. I mean, they probably call her by her name. All right, lab assistant, right? Kirsty. So, uh, so she's... I think it's Kirsty. probably Kirsty. Right, Kirsty well, Morris. Well, she's in there, right? Yeah. And she doesn't work with many people and that. She's mainly on her own with, you know, just putting lipstick on rabbits and stuff like that, right? She didn't fancy that? So, uh... <laughs> she didn't fancy her. She's putting on lipstick, she didn't fancy that. So she's got hairy legs. He gets, he gets pally, right, <laughs> with, with this woman. <laughs> because... You know, it, 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 it gets to a point when she sees him every day. <laughs> like, let, the way he sort of tries to string out like it's a narrative love story. Let, let the, the, ch the chimp put his hand out and grabbed her, and then you're thinking that he made a move on her. So, right, come on, he's allowed out, he's allowed out. Oh, it's not a story, is it? He's allowed it's out the cage and what have you. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, he's wandering about, and as time goes on, he's watching what she's doing more and more, yeah. right? So, he, he notices, like, the code on the door. Right. <laughs> right. She, whatever, two, four, seven, or whatever. Yeah. He goes, right, I've clocked that, I've got yeah. that, I'll remember that, right? Yeah. And then he goes, right, there's a Definitely lot of lipstick not. and that knocking about, a lot of makeup. Right, okay. Let no, no, there's no way. Finish. No, because so, Steve, you know what's gonna happen. I know what's gonna happen. So he's there. It's and ridiculous. And he's finish. going, well, if it's there, you know what I mean? So, so, while she's messing about with the rabbit, he gets there, he's in front of the mirror, putting a little bit of lippy on. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> No, it's gone too far. Little it's little gone too far, Steve. Right, Your mic's off, Rick. He's finishing right. the story. So, Turn mine off as well. It's, gone. And it's looking pretty good. I didn't mention the mascara. It's looking all right, right? So it knows the code on the door, 247, right? So when she's sort of messing about with the rabbit, right, he goes, right, is, right? So it knows the code on the door, 247, right? So when she's sort of messing about with the rabbit, right, he goes, right, here's my chance. He's looking good. Two, four, seven. Out the door. Reception man's there. He's like, all right, Kirsty. Right? Don't talk shit! It's the last track. Is Nick guys, I imagine, on XFM 104.9? Well, I mean, I, yeah. I've got nothing to say after that. Ridiculous. Ridiculous story. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's worse than the bank robbery to me. Yeah. That he clocks out. And, and the bloke on the desk. All right, Kirsty. Oh, you're two foot shorter <laughs> and hairy. She yes. wasn't a looker anyway. <laughs> she wasn't a looker anyway. Brilliant. Oh, play record and say to you, we'll see you next week oh, for the last time. I've just got to add some. Oh, Everett. Oh, I'd love to end with Everett. See you later. It's brilliant. Going out on a bang. Put his throbber in her clover.